We don't often see new smartphone designs nowadays. Most phones are glass sandwiches with some color on the back. Well, maybe except for foldable phones, which are becoming more and more interesting. But a new company on the market, Nothing, founded by Carl Pei, the co-founder of OnePlus, has tried something different with the design of their Nothing Phone 1, both on the outside and in the software. We've been using this device for almost 6 months now, so let's see if it's worth the hype in this long-term review. We definitely have to start with the design. The Nothing Phone 1 has a transparent back, showing what the components look like inside, adding some nice depth to the back. More importantly, there are a few LED lights that light up depending on what's happening with the device. We'll discuss this in a separate section, but this is definitely a distinguishing feature and its wow factor. Otherwise, the phone is very well built, with a glass front and back and an aluminium frame. You can either get a black or a white model, depending on the memory and storage configuration. I went with the black one. It's smaller than most phones due to its 6.55 inch screen, which we'll discuss soon. It's not fully waterproof, but it does have IP53 splash resistance. Overall, the design is definitely a high point. It's actually one of a few phones that I use with a transparent phone case to experience it fully. The main selling point are obviously the LED lights, or glyphs as they're called. They light up when the phone is charging, lighting up the bottom near the charge port and showing the charging progress. It also works as a reminder that you have some notifications on the screen, or when someone is calling you. If your ringtone is on, it will do a different light pattern when someone calls. You can configure it as well in the phone settings. Also, when you use reverse wireless charging, which is supported on this phone, for example to charge your Nothing earbuds, it will light up as well. Overall, it's a bit of a gimmick, especially that I mostly keep my phone on its back, but I personally found it nice and useful from time to time. Definitely a highlight of the device. Another highlight of the Nothing Phone 1 is the battery, and I found it to work really well. It's quite big at 4500 mAh and I never had any issues. I was especially impressed by the standby time. The phone could stay on without use for a long time. The charging isn't very fast at 33 watts compared to other devices, but it's not bad. It should charge a full battery in 70 minutes according to the manufacturer. There's also wireless charging at 15 watts and the aforementioned reverse wireless charging as well. The good battery life is also thanks to an efficient chipset, the 6nm Qualcomm Snapdragon 788G+. It's not the fastest, but it performs really well for general phone use. Everything worked really smoothly, especially animations in the operating system. No problems with any apps either. Unsurprisingly, basic games like Sonic worked great. The brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game from Netflix worked great with my game controller as well, but it's expected as it's a 2D game. I did see some slowdowns in my favorite racing game, Asphalt Extreme, but it was fine most of the time. Call of Duty Mobile worked great. I was able to play with very high graphic quality and very high frame rate without issues. Genshin Impact also worked fine with low detail. Don't expect the highest quality here, but the gameplay and performance were fine. For emulation, I had no issues with older consoles. Even GameCube worked perfectly fine, as did Sega Dreamcast. PSP worked at full speed even for God of War games. The only issue was with PS2 where it was around 40 frames per second for Colin McRae Rally 3, which was rather surprising. However, it turned out that it was enough to switch from OpenGL to Vulkan for rendering, and it worked fine after that, going to 60 frames per second as expected. You'll enjoy those games on the lovely 6.55 inch OLED screen with the resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels. It supports either 60 or 120Hz refresh rate, which is brilliant to see. 
It's not the brightest or best performing screen we've seen, but for a mid-range device it's definitely good enough for daily use and some video content watching. The phone does theoretically support the HDR10 Plus standard, but unfortunately it wasn't available in Netflix. While the One is not my first choice for watching movies, it's definitely good enough, and the fact that the bezels are of the same width around the screen adds to the consistency of the device. The software is another highlight of the Nothing Phone One due to its uniqueness. A custom font reminding of the glyphs on the back is used in many places and the white and red color scheme appear here and there, including the camera app and the audio recorder app. You'll also be happy to hear that those were actually two of the few apps pre-installed on the phone, so it's very clean, close to stock Android. I really like the notification shade with its really large icons. You can scroll within here to choose between Wi-Fi, your phone's internet connection and the hotspot. The about phone menu was especially nice with a nice nothing phone image. When it comes to software updates, at the time of writing in mid-January, I'm on the November security update, which is two months behind Google. But that's not too bad compared to the Poco F4 GT I'm reviewing that's two months behind with the September update. The CEO of Nothing is promising continued focus on software rather than releasing new hardware, so that's promising for the long term. There's also an Android 13 beta, and the latest version should hopefully be rolled out to all users in early 2023. Speaking of security, the Nothing Phone One uses a really good in-screen fingerprint scanner to log in. I had no issues with it, it was quite fast, and while it won't beat my favorite side-mounted fingerprint scanner, it serves its purpose really well. There's also face unlock, and it worked fine, but I haven't used it too much personally. The audio quality was alright. It uses the bottom speaker plus a front-facing speaker at the top for stereo effect. It's not the loudest or most bassy, especially compared to dedicated stereo speakers, but it's good enough. There's unfortunately no headphone jack, but that's to be expected from a company which produces wireless earbuds. Finally, my favorite section, camera performance. Let's start with the main camera. It's 50 megapixels with an f1.9 aperture. The main camera performed well for day photos, including of buildings and people. I got some nice photos from my trip to London. I did like portrait photos a lot. They came out really nice. I got some lovely photos of gnome figures during my visit to Poland. But unfortunately, quite a lot of photos were randomly out of focus. Look at all those adorable photos of Mateo's cats. Too bad many of them are out of focus. When it gets darker, the phone doesn't do too well either. I photographed two events in darkness, and the results were mixed and not too usable. One was the military musical festival in Edinburgh, and unfortunately, a lot of detail was lost. The other was a night lights experience up north of Scotland. Here again, we can't see too much detail. Let's hope nothing continue working on this going forward. The ultrawide is also a 50 megapixel one with an f2.2 aperture. I found it to perform really well actually. In some cases the photos were even brighter than the main camera for some reason. It did really well especially with buildings and architecture. Here are some more sample photos. The 16 megapixel selfie camera also performed quite well. I really liked how it depicted people, either one or two. The portrait mode is quite good as well. Even this photo of me and Matteo has a good separation between us and the background, which is nicely blurred. The dynamic range is quite good as well. You can still see the sky properly exposed. As with the main camera, just be careful with lower light photos they might not come out too great. The phone supports video up to 4K 30 frames per second, and the quality is quite good, especially in good lighting. The main lens actually has optical image stabilization, which definitely helps here. Again, in lower light, I've noticed some flickering or pulsating in a few of my videos, including a family wedding I was filming. 
Maybe it was searching for focus or something similar. Not sure why this was happening. There's also no 4K recording in 60 frames per second, but that's a limitation of the chipset. It's good to see that 4K recording is supported on the ultra wide though. However, the selfie camera is limited to full HD. If you want to see more, check our detailed sample video from all the cameras. Overall, the video quality is quite good as long as you don't film in low light a lot. Overall, I'm quite happy with the Nothing Phone 1. It's their first device, but coming from people who have a lot of experience in the industry. If you want a mid-range phone with a good performance and interesting features, and camera quality in lower light isn't your top priority, it's definitely a great choice. That's it for this review. Let us know if you have any thoughts, leave us a like to inform the algorithm, subscribe for more videos from us, and as always, thanks for watching.